Yeah, I, I think it is largely true, but I, 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 I've, I've made up all of this, so <laughs> that's, that's fair. Um, thank you. It's really lovely to be a part of this. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Rachel, wherever you are. There you are. Thank you, Rachel. Um, and, and thank you, uh, Emma, Caitlin, and Patrick. I'm very happy that you could be a part of this. Um, because I was organising it, I, I figured that it fell on me to write about what I figured was the most difficult of, of the things in the museum at the minute, uh, this one. Um, and I guess my... You know, I figured I should try that um, because it was very, very hard. And, and the reason why I find it hard, um, oh, it's because it's a new painting, and I, I don't really, you know, I don't know how to participate in that, that gaziness or that tradition or, or that, that act of viewing again. I felt kind of reluctant to do that. Um, and I thought the way that I might get around that is um, by learning more things about Modigliani, maybe finding some of his materials, uh, reading uh, collage and making things out of them. Um, and I did that, so I went to the library and I, I wanted to get out some books. So the majority of this has been, has been cobbled together from, from his writings, um, or at least from Modigliani's writings. Um, so there's a couple of parts in this, um, and uh, I'll, I'll explain just a little bit after I read one of them. Um, and I should also clarify that it's my ambition that this is tremendously boring. But, uh, um, <laughs> It, it kind of happens, but I should say how nice it was here to, uh, to hear Aviva talking earlier about the painting. I learned an awful lot, and it was a, a marvellous talk, and it makes me feel ashamed of what I'm about to do. <laughs> <laughs> so the title of this, this is ever so slightly different from what's in the, the lovely pamphlet that was produced. Um, there are errors and omissions of some kind. Um, so there's a little bit in, that I'm going to read that's not in that, um, but that's all right. Uh, mistakes happen, and I think the whole enterprise of a crisis is is a compromise anyway, we're never going to get this right, so why not get it spectacularly wrong, is kind of my philosophy. Um, so the title of this comes from an interview uh, with a man called William A. Barnett. Um, and I'm not going to read it, but uh, the title is uh, No Known Relation. Our remaining task is to show how the interaction of the four basic blocks produces a series of results which are anti-classic, including the crucial result. I propose to develop my argument in graphical form, relying on a construction known as the four quadrant analysis. It is a bit cumbersome, but in my view, very helpful for a solid understanding of the argument. The four quadrants are needed to accommodate the four variables of the model. The four variables are measured along the four semi-axes that extend outward from the origin, as shown in the graph. Thus, x is measured along the vertical axis, extending upward from the origin. R is measured along the horizontal axis, extending rightward from the origin, and similarly I and S are measured along the remaining two semi-axes. As a result, we end up with four quadrants that, that on the graph are labelled counterclockwise 1 to 4. 1, the basic model. Brumberg and I were thrilled to discover that by combining our basic model with some information derived from experience and introspection about the nature of the typical life cycle of income and tastes, one could readily derive a number of interesting implications, some which were obviously consistent with the facts, though they threw new light on them, while others were novel and testable. This assumption has been chosen not because we think it is realistic, but only because it eliminates the necessity of showing a separate curve in our figure. The slope and intercept of this curve will thus depend on the elasticity of expectations. One finding has to do with elasticity of consumption, income on the one hand and age on the other, to which reference has been made earlier. It can be shown that the slope of C should tend to fall and its intercept to rise with age unless, on the average, the elasticity of income expectations is extremely low, say, in the neighbourhood of zero. For, according to our model, age does not enter in a linear fashion. As to the effect of the life cycle on the composition of the portfolio, one might expect that during the period of family formation, people will put most of their savings into durables. Inasmuch as this model has been shown elsewhere to be equally consistent with the major findings of a time series analysis, we seem to be near to the ultimate goal of a unified and yet simple theory of the consumption function. The implication of our model clearly forms the basis for a crucial experiment. This experiment has not been carried out as such, although we look forward to its being performed in the near future by anyone having the resources and interest. Nevertheless, the brief sketch presented should be sufficient. Now, when I read from volumes 1 to 6 of the collected papers of Modigliani, I soon discovered that I was reading from the collected papers of Franco Modigliani, who is a celebrated Italian economist. 
And I figured that rather than going back to the library, I would, I would try to make it work, because I'd read a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, let's, let's see if there's anything happening. And I found it amusing that there, you know, that the two, the two arts, let's say, um, involve some of the same procedures, uh, the same models, the same curves, the same value, the same, uh, the same sense of perhaps the exploitation of, of images and people. Anyway, that's my, my aside. I'm going to continue with the letter uh, that someone wrote uh, to, to Amadeo. Uh, he replies, I went back to books that actually involved his work. Uh, so <laughs> when he replies, these are things he has said in letters. Anyway, to Amigo, I said, what's he, do what's he doing to this woman? As above, I read my favourite chapter from your last publication, Collected Papers of Modigliani, though they have misprinted your name for its largesse, putting the libra in library, putting the libra in library, learning plenty of the artist's art. I said, I'll study the book and figure how this curve means what, amigo, what's the name of the depicted, the providence of the African masks, initials in the curls of hair, amigo, but for all the exposition of models and lines, I learned little from your book of painting, amigo. They mentioned the Vorno only once. Alas, I sit the book against my wall, its white split head, its slip and belly band unwrapped, its lovely boring spine unseen, amigo. It says no more about this woman, nothing of what she's paid for her likeness. Do you remember C. B., the painter surgeon, tickling the canvas, as they say, while his soldier models, rancid with infection, wriggled in the theatre? What's it worth, amigo? And furthermore, you've gained such success with that patron saint of artists, economics, who knew your talent for pennilessness would one day land you the Nobel Prize? Yours. Three. Dear friend, I pour myself out to you and to affirm myself to myself. I am the prey of great powers that surge forth and then disintegrate. But I should like my life to be as an opulently abundant river flowing over the land with joy. I shall not speak of Rome. I would like to tell you what are the new weapons with which I shall take up more the joys of battle. I shall not speak of Rome. As I speak to you, Rome is not outside but inside me, like a terrible jewel set upon its seven hills, as upon seven imperious ideas. Capri, whose name alone would invoke in my mind a tumult of images of beauty and antique sensuality, appears to me essentially a symbol of springtime. In the classical beauty of this landscape, there is an omnipresent and indefinable feeling of the voluptuousness. And even despite the English invading with their Baedekers, a glittering and venomous flower emerging from the sea. So much for poetry. Imagine besides in the countryside by moonlight with a Norwegian girl. I don't know exactly when I shall be in Venice. Venice. Head of Medusa with countless blue serpents, sea green immense eye in which the soul is lost. I shall let you know. I should like to visit it with you. Yours, A. M. P. S. The following errors are egregious. <clears throat> Here I atone for what I did. Errata. Expand should read contract. Quite insignificant should read quite significant. Casually should read causally. Seriously biased as a result of should read contaminated by. Larger should read smaller. Very close to unity should read very close to minus one. Two over three should read three over two. 0 0.67 should read 0 0.31. Average should read average. If should read saving. Effect should read affect. As long as should read even if. Who should read whom? Deviation should read deviations. Carrying on should read carrying out. Assumption should read assumptions. They that both should read, they show that both. Quieten should read quieted. Margin of errors should read margins of error. Till should read until. To the banking should read with the banking. Or should read for. Putty putty mod the optimaliel should read. Putty Putty model the optimality. Amadeo Modigliani should read Franco Modigliani. <laughs>